Hey, this is Madeline Sklar. And Suze Cooper, and you're listening to All Things Audio. So this first tweet is from Morgan, and it's around the space that Elon held this week, the XAI space. Um, He had a bit of a complaint, didn't he, Madeline? Yeah, it seems that he's complaining that spaces aren't being boosted enough in in people's feeds. Uh, Haven't we been complaining about that for a while, how poor discoverability is? Is he just now noticing this? Yeah, he's just now noticing it because he's just now using it. Um, so I, <laughs> there I, you go. I would imagine it's not a problem until it's a problem for Elon, right? Um, the rest of us have been using spaces for quite some time. It's never really been something that has been completely solved. Uh, we've always felt like discoverability has been an issue, even pre-Elon. Um, but certainly since Elon and, you know, with less and less information about what's happening with spaces and fewer and fewer people to turn to to ask about spaces, um, it certainly felt like it's, you know, lost in a in a sea of what's left of the tweets on the timeline. So, yeah, it really just feels like, yeah, Elon, tell us something we don't know, right? There you go. That's why we always remind our listeners to check out spaces-board.com. Andrew has created such an amazing website where discoverability is so simple. I love the ability to do keyword searches or search for a user profile and see what are they hosting, what are they co-hosting, and what spaces that they've just been a speaker in. It is phenomenal information. I am surprised that Twitter has not bought that site up and incorporated that into into Twitter. I mean, you see, I hope that's what happens if that's what Andrew wants. Uh, it, it's an amazing discoverability tool. I'm so frustrated, Suze, that it's not just our space, it's all the other ones I host and co-host plus other spaces I've been in where you're just not seeing people show up like they used to. I'm not getting any of them in my notifications. Uh, I always do a set reminder for any space I plan to speak in and or just tune into. I never see it in the notifications. They used to be very good about sending you a reminder. I mean, I just feel very stuck in my bubble in Twitter at the moment. I feel like no one who doesn't already follow me is seeing my tweets. And I feel like I'm not seeing any content from anyone other than those who I already follow and who I actually interact with. It feel, it very much feels like anyone that I've interacted with over the last week, I will see everything that they tweet. <laughs> um, and then I'm just not seeing anyone else. I mean, I, I follow a fair couple of thousand people. Uh, I don't know how many of those people are still active on here, I guess, but I I probably see the same like 10, 12 people <laughs> all the time on the timeline for the length of time that I would scroll. And so if, if you're seeing that on the timeline in the text feed then and you then take how many people are using spaces and how poor discoverability for spaces is the the translation just you end up seeing nothing new and uh hearing from no one new at all in spaces so it's it is it's tricky and it feels like spaces dashboard is the bit that spaces has always been missing in a way um that just isn't integrated it's not here on the platform and it feels like that's kind of what they need they need to make sure that you know if people are putting together content and they're using spaces as a feature that people can find this stuff because it's not like we don't promote it it's not like we're not tweeting it at all we do tweet it um we treat tweet the card we ask people to set the reminder um you know e- even even that function where you're asking people to set the reminder and i can see people have apparently set the reminder according to the card but then that doesn't translate into how many people actually filter into the space in the time that we're live so is that really notifying people anymore or not it's it's hard hard work right now right it really is there was also a tweet from twitter daily news saying that when elon was in this ai space recently that the Twitter for you algorithm is going to be adjusted to give more prominence to ongoing spaces. But he said, especially larger ones. Let's hope that is for everybody, not just the larger spaces. We would like discoverability to be for all. And then Andrew here, who's here live with us from Spaces Dashboard, just put a little comment in the chat saying, we have some good news to share tonight. Ooh, I cannot wait to hear that. 
the suspense. Oh boy, might be something going on that we need to hear about. Uh, one thing that's, uh, you know, great news to keep hearing about, we, we've reported on this for the past few months. Legion's been keeping us all updated through his Twitter feed about how Twitter is working on spaces for desktop. And he did another updated tweet. It's actually from a thread that he's been doing for a while here, just kind of showing the progression. And in this latest one, he has a screenshot showing getting invited to speak from desktop. So I don't know if he just has early access or because he's like one of those reverse engineers, does he just somehow is able to do something that none of us can be doing right now? Not sure. But in the screenshot, it looks pretty exciting, Suze, when you can see that he is clearly on, on desktop and it says, you've been invited to speak, join a speaker. It's like, oh, I cannot wait for that day. It'll be so nice. It, it's interesting, isn't it? Because quite obviously, if the actual um, speaking into a space isn't an actual active feature at the moment, surely everyone just looks like they're muted, right, on desktop. Yeah, it looks a little different. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to know that there's still things filtering through. We seem to have had something small to say about desktop every week for about three or four weeks now. So it just really feels like we're teetering on the edge of them actually doing something. I mean, we know they're very light on the ground when it comes to those who are working on spaces now. Um, but yeah, interesting to see what appear to be screenshots um, here from, from Legion. And certainly the, the next step into desktop, we would expect to be being able to speak via desktop. So we would expect to have all the same, um, you know, little visual cues and things that we ex that we have here right on the mobile. So things like mute, unmute and being invited to speak. So yeah, really interesting to see this. And when we think back to pre Elon's takeover of Twitter, this was going to be the next big feature for spaces. That's what the team was telling all of us. They were doing those uh, Q&A spaces, community spaces, and talking about how they were working on desktop, giving us the ability to speak from there. And so it's, it's really been a drag. that We've had to wait all this extra time before Elon and his very small engineering team, you know, now that we're hearing they're working on it. But uh, what a long wait it's been, Suze. Yeah, it does seem to have certainly been. I mean, there's back burners and then there's this, I think. <laughs> so I think we've very much been on hold in this, you know, as I say, very much a holding pattern with spaces. Um, but, you know, slowly we are hearing things, whether or not we're actually seeing the features come to fruition. We're not really doing that yet. I mean, the one thing that we've seen really was captions go, captions return. But aside from that, over all these months, we're just hoping that the stability stays up so that we can continue to do spaces. And uh, and it's really a shot in the dark as to as and when they might do something and whether or not this will really be the next thing that, that happens for spaces. Right, exactly. Uh, some exciting news that's been going on this week is the the feature communities, which has not been giving much love by Twitter uh, for a while now, it seems like it's getting some much needed love. They just did this announcement that, uh, and you know, we have our All Things Audio community. We have that community feature. I have one for Twitter Smarter. Haven't used it a whole lot for months because, again, there's just no love being given to it from Twitter. They make it really difficult to get notifications, to keep people engaged. Uh, but we were notified that if you're a community admin or moderator, you can now promote this right from your profile. So I immediately jumped on that. And I'm going to put a screenshot here in the nest that will show you. Uh, you can just go to my profile. But here's something funny I did at Sue's yesterday. So first, I just did a tweet saying I did a screenshot of, of my profile from, from desktop. And I said, do you notice anything different on my profile? And if you look at the picture and you pay attention, you will clearly see I have the community's little section on there. It was where the newsletter was, right below the bio. And a lot of people were responding and they didn't even notice that. So I did another screenshot with some big arrows pointing to it. So you could not miss that I'm pointing to the little community section. And my first reaction to this was, finally, we're getting more love back to the community's feature. I think it could be a great feature when 
I guess it was, it was pre-Elon when, when a lot of us were experimenting with communities. We had the ability to do spaces in there, which was cool. It was short-lived though, right, Suze? I don't remember us having that for very long. I think it was just a very short. No, I mean, I, d I did one and it was really good. In fact, um, we actually had a few people join the community because they saw it live and then they, jo they joined the space and then joined the community. Uh, I think I, I went live for something like half an hour. It was something daft like that. But we got five new community members in that time and people who have since been into the All Things Audio um, space on a Wednesday. So, you know, I could see how, how it was going to work. But as you said, Madeline, it's very difficult to, you know, put effort into something when you don't know if Twitter are about to completely can it. Like, you don't want to be creating separate content for something, um, you know, everybody's very time poor and it's it's hard to keep something like that going at the best of times without having this kind of underlying feeling that you're kind of on shaky ground with it and that it might just disappear completely. So it's good to see that, you know, if they're inviting people to add the communities onto their bio and their profile, then, you know, you would imagine that it's going to hang around. And yeah, I mean, the community spaces were something that we were very excited about. It meant that, you know, we could kind of jump in and speak to people who had joined our community as you say it is there um it hasn't done very much in recent times i saw tristan actually um did post the the 100 emoji screenshot from last week thank you very much into the community um and i check in on it every so often but it's not got its own kind of content diary at the moment as it were which is what i would have liked for it just because i was waiting for them to kind of just pull it all together. How did you get your community on your bio, Madeline? Because I haven't been invited to add all things audio community to mine and I couldn't see a way of doing it. So I wonder if it's just a US only thing at the moment. Oh, um, okay. So it, in this um, tweet from Dong Wook Chung, who's a Twitter employee, uh, that's where these notifications were, were first coming from. Um, all you do is you go, he has some screenshots that show this. You go, it's, you know why it might not have worked for you? you? You have to go do it on the web. It's visible if you're on mobile for people to see, but to, to set this up, you got to do it on web. So from web, you go to your community section. There's a little uh, community management place there where you can go in and add it. And I was able to do it quite easily yesterday. Um, and it gives you the, if you are an admin or a moderator for more than one, it'll show you all of them. You can only pick one. And then it'll show up under your bio on your profile for both desktop and mobile. But to set it up, you have to do it on web. Amazing. I'll have to head over there after this and uh, and see if I can set it up so it shows up on, on mine. But um, yeah, it, uh, as I say, it's great to see them thinking about the, the communities again. I know there are a lot of people who built communities really quickly, quite large communities, who will be happy to see that back again. And I think having community-only spaces is a really good thing uh, for building those relationships and um, yeah, really having that, that community feel. It's exactly what it says on the tin. Right. And this Twitter employee, um, according to uh, Morgan, who I see is here live with us. Hey, Morgan. He had reported to us in the DMs that this Twitter employee, I, I'm assuming this is somebody that's working on the community's team, and that he had popped up in his space and spoke briefly about the community's roadmap and reminding people they have very few staff, uh, but that is great that this has now become a priority. I, I just love seeing communities pop, because I had pretty much given up on it, Suze. I thought this could be great, not as great as a Facebook group. Facebook groups have lots of features, but I felt like this was a good direction to go in for for people to build a community around, like, like what we have here with All Things Audio and what I have with Twitter Smarter. But Apparently, this Twitter employee did state in this space that getting spaces working in the communities for everyone is something that he would like, but he doesn't think is going to come anytime soon. So it's, it's a wait and see, but I'm hoping they will bring spaces back to communities. But maybe it's just a little process. So now communities is getting a little bit more love. They're doing a little bit more to make it stand out. And maybe the next step will be to add spaces. Yeah, that that's a shame to hear that. But yeah, I can, you know, I can see that it's very, very slow, isn't it? It's very slow, everything that they're doing. So it it's it's not a never. It's just a not on the roadmap for now. <laughs> I live exactly. in hope. Exactly. 
<laughs> we can always hope. We can. Now, this bit um, of news actually came from Michael Sterling, who is I can see is in the space um, today. So thank you, Michael, who tweeted out um, a clip from a Clubhouse community um, room that was held. Uh, now, we've not heard very much from Clubhouse. They said they were going, you know, behind closed doors. They were going to go for this Clubhouse 2.0. They were going to completely redo things we weren't gonna recognize what they were going to come back with but equally they were going to do it all behind closed doors they were going to go completely dark on us and most certainly they have i mean from doing weekly town halls to to not hearing from them at all now i'm going to see whether or not i can actually play the clip that um that michael snapped for us from the uh from the clubhouse co-founder paul davison i appreciate everyone's patience and we are absolutely going to um, you know, uh, share everything as soon as we can and bring everyone along for the ride. And we can't wait to get your feedback on everything as soon as we can. We're working on um, kind of like timelines right now. Like, okay, here's all the remaining stuff we want to do before we can ship the big update. And here's how many weeks we think that's going to take. And hopefully we'll have uh, a better sense for that um, internally soon. Wow, the big update is still being referred to, Madeline. They're definitely doing something. They're doing something. Something big's coming. Can't wait to hear what it's going to be. What do you think it might be? Have you got any ideas? Oh, gosh, I don't know. You know, I just don't spend time over there anymore, so I couldn't even speculate. I've, I'm just all Twitter, 100%. Not even when I used to be like 25% clubhouse and 75% spaces. It's like... All in, all in on spaces. I am. I'm all in. I'm all in. They lost me at clubhouse. I'm sorry. Aww. Well, I wonder whether or not... Um, we were thinking about this earlier in the in the DMs and, and Michael came up with some really great ideas. Possibly they're thinking more about monetization, perhaps some AI integrations, or maybe even some brand partnerships. And I think all of those are definite possibilities. We're not seeing anybody really in social audio doing anything with um, AI. And considering we've now got these large language models flying about and all of that kind of stuff, it would be great to see what happens when you plug one of those into one of these and what do you, what comes out, you know? So I think that's totally a possibility. Um, he also suggests something maybe with AR or VR. Perhaps we're going to be in some kind of virtual space when we're talking to each other. And I even maybe suggested like, are they really hard and fast going to stick with audio? Could we maybe even see a video element to it? I think it's anybody's guess. Like they are being so quiet about this that, you know, we're not even seeing any uh, reverse engineered stuff. We're not seeing background screenshots or anything like that. So um, when we open the mics, I would absolutely love to hear from those of you who I know still hang out on Clubhouse quite a lot and, and hear what you think this big update might be. Um, as as the um, the clip said, you know, they're, they're putting the timeline in place. We still don't know how long we've got to wait before this big update will be released. We're just being told soon. So um, there's definite movement over there. And they obviously felt like they had to say something. It had been such a long time. But it's no news is the news right now, I think. And um, all we can do is speculate. Exactly. And it's so interesting how we used to always have something to say about Clubhouse every week. There was news constantly and we just don't get news. I, I kind of miss that because I always felt like I knew more about what was happening over there. It did make me a little bit more interested in using it, but I just feel like no news. And it's like, well, okay. It just doesn't, it doesn't become top of mind for me because I don't ever hear anything about them. Well, wow, perhaps this is the big the big comeback, the big return. Could be. Could be the big comeback. So I'm eager to find out like you know, what's what's the big launch? What are they doing? What's next? So uh, we'll 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 be sure to let you all know as soon as we find out. Yeah, I mean it'd be interesting to see them launch something that's not in in such odd circumstances as well. Obviously Clubhouse was born, you know, during the pandemic. It was launched. We were all very much housebound, all of those kind of things. So it'll be interesting to see how this happens and the reaction to it now that we are all back out in the world and, and doing regular things again. So yeah, all, all very interesting stuff. And wouldn't it be cool if they kind of go in a new direction that's giving us something we don't already have in spaces or other platforms that would bring us back over? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think though that kind of blue sky thinking um, is quite interesting. Like, where could they go with this? What could they be building over there? And uh, yeah, it's anybody's guess, but um, it would be good to, if it's something that we haven't seen before. 
Oh, most definitely. Uh, so real quick, just a, uh, we have a couple of quick miscellaneous things, and then we would love to hear from you. So go ahead and feel free to request the mic. If you have something to talk about from the news we shared today, or maybe you have some, some news that you want to report to us, something that's relevant to this conversation, please feel free to request the mic. But while uh, we're getting set up for that, I had the pleasure of speaking about social audio this past Friday at a, a local event. It's a, uh, an event I used to be a, a big part of years ago. Uh, it's called Houston Social Media Breakfast. And they put on these types of social media events all across the U.S. And you just have diff- different chapters based on the location. And so the one here in Houston has been meeting up once a month for I think maybe 12 years now. And I used to be heavily involved a long time ago. Well, they invited me to come in and speak about social audio, something you all know that I'm very passionate about. So it was a really fun conversation just talking about ways to leverage social audio for community building. So you might want to bookmark that tweet, go check it out. I have a link to it over in YouTube from that live stream. It's just 30 minutes long. It's pretty short. And I just give my, my thoughts and insights. And it's so funny, Suze, I haven't seen myself in a lot. Li- you know, I'm just so used to live streams being up close, right? Where you, you just see the person's face. This is like further back. They had a whole very pro live stream set up. And, and I look at this, I go, wow, I sure do have a lot of tattoos. So if you don't realize my arms are covered in tattoos, go check this out. And you'd be like, wow, she really does have a lot. I, I had to do a double take. I'm like, you know, you don't always realize until you see yourself, right, <laughs> on a, on camera, on video, or whatever. So I just got a real chuckle out of that. And I kind of made funny comments about that on my Facebook, like, oh, look at all those tattoos. And then um, you wrote a really good newsletter this week. I'm going to put that in the nest because everybody should definitely go read this. Uh, definitely uh, want you to share a little bit about this, Suze, because you basically talked about the 100 episodes we've done here with All Things Audio that we did our big celebration last week, you wrote about 100 things you learned. It's an incredible piece that you wrote. You want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, it's been a bit bonkers putting it together, to be honest. Um, So for those of you that don't know, I set up a sub stack a little while ago. Um, I'm a few months into it now. I'm really enjoying doing it. It's called Stop, Rewind, Play. And um, in the true spirit of me being an audio nerd, it covers all kinds of things, podcasting, sound design and social audio in there as well. And I figured seeing as we'd hit 100 spaces last week, I would be indulgent and I would actually create a post that was just looking at social audio. Also, because actually quite a few of the people that have signed up to it seem to be there for the social audio stuff because there's not so many people talking at events about it, like you've just said, Madeline, um, or writing about it. So, um, But this 100 things that I've learned um, while doing 100 Twitter spaces actually has been living on my phone for quite some time. So each time I've thought of something, I've like put it in the notes on my phone (laughs) and it became like a a list. It's actually of more than 100, but it seemed relevant seeing as it was 100 spaces just to make it 100. And partly, I guess I was thinking if someone does ask me to speak at an event about spaces, which they haven't done yet, um, then it might, you know, it's kind of there as, as, oh, yes, I could talk about that thing or that thing or that might be relevant and turn it into a presentation. But as it is, it's sort of turned into this blog post. Um, They're not necessarily, I have to say, all things, when I read it through, they're not necessarily all things that I do, but they're things that we have discussed, things that we've said are best practice. You know what it's like. Who does the perfect thing all the time in the right way? Nobody. But we all know the way that we should do it or we could do it. So some of them are a bit like that. Um, But yeah, it was surprisingly easy to come up with 100 having having done this um, for the last couple of years. And I really enjoyed putting it together. Um, So yeah, I would love to hear of anybody else's lessons, any um, that you've thought of that I didn't think of or that I didn't include in here or even ones that you don't agree with that are in here, perhaps, or that you would change or or that are different. So um, if you'd like to read it, do go along. Um, I think if the the link is actually in the comments of the tweet that Madeline has put in the nest, because I added it there earlier. I tend not to tweet out the Substack link because Elon hates Substack so much that no one ever sees it, like literally no one ever sees it. So the other way of doing it is going to my bio, hitting my link tree, and it's the top link 
in there to sign up for Stop Rewind Play. And this is last week's post. So um, do go along, do have a look, do comment on it. We can start a little chat about these 100 lessons. And it was a really fun thing to put together. And I just hope it helps people that have you know, thinking about setting up spaces or have got spaces and yeah, might want some new ideas of ways to do things. I'm blown away that you came up with a hundred items. It's really an interesting read and they're just short, but but it's like, wow, you've collected a lot of thoughts and information that really you should turn into a blog post because it's just really well done. Well, we do have some speakers. Hey, Greg. Hello. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Hi, we're good. We're good. I wanted to touch on the Clubhouse thing real quick. I was a power user of Clubhouse for a long time, and it really is like such a shame. I just feel like they moved so slow in the beginning, and and Twitter Spaces just kind of took over uh, completely. Um, I guess I'm interested to see what they come up with. It's going to really take a lot for me to like go back there. Um, I do have some followers over there, so maybe. But uh, yeah, Clubhouse just kind of they, they, I don't know. It feels like they missed an opportunity, but we'll see what happens. Um, and I like what you did right there, Suze, with, uh, playing some of this external audio into the room, uh, when it came to, uh, Paul over at clubhouse right there. And I think something I've been thinking about lately. So I just started a new brand called louder and we're doing spaces three times a week. And it's this whole like social audio, building your audience kind of thing. And, what we're doing in our spaces is really going heavy on kind of the external audio and the custom audio. And we did something similar with that. Like I had a, a couple of guys in there who were Twitter ghostwriters and I had, you know, Layla Hermosi clip of her talking about Twitter ghostwriting and then having them like react to it. Right. And so kind of making it like a little more like a reaction segment, but overall thinking of it more of as like a radio show. Like I think that that's really the evolution of spaces is to go into um, having more like custom audio intros, like when the show, instead of just being like, Hey guys, just waiting for everyone to join or just having like some like light music in the background and then starting having like, we've been having like these AI voice come in to introduce the show. Right. It's like, as if you just turned on the radio and it's like, welcome back to Z100, blah, 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 like that type of thing. And really making it like a highly produced effort. Um, I think eventually there'll probably be tools to help with that. But right now I think the bar to, to doing that is a little bit higher. And so those people that know how to edit audio could actually create some pretty dynamic audio uh, experiences. That's really the word we're harping on is experience. And that's kind of what our guests have been saying is like, yo, that was like kind of an experience rather than just a space. So um, I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say on that. And then also just a note, Suze, I'm looking forward very much to reading your 100 lessons from spaces and uh, seeing if I can pull anything from all your experience. So thank you guys. Oh, thanks, Greg. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, do and do add any anything that you think you can add to it. Because I want it to be a kind of conversation starter, really. Um, as we said in the 100th space, we don't know everything about this thing. We're trying to learn it all together. So um, anything else that you can add to it is always very, very welcome. Um, I think it's really interesting what you've said about, um, you know, kind of it being a more highly produced uh, experience over here on Spaces. I think that's what I always kind of hoped I would get to and certainly why I bought the Roadcaster. Um, you know, I, I miss the radio station dreadfully. <laughs> I love the radio station and this gives you a little bit, a little bit of a taste of the radio station. Um, but I've kind of held back from creating lots of bits of production, particularly for this. Um, yeah, I don't know. It kind of feels like that. I don't know. We've got our own little vibe going on that kind of works without it for this particular thing. But I could totally see spaces where, you know, you're playing reactions in. Um, we, we've done it a few times where we've played certain um, elements in, um, you know, and we've got the new upfront, which is a record, you know, one, I did it once in a one -er explaining what the space was, was about, um, you know, and around why we don't take mic requests at the beginning and all of that. And that is now a pre-recorded piece that you hear that we play out right at the beginning. We've also pretty much always had our theme music, which is the same as our podcast music, which I felt was really important just in terms of you know, that's kind of sonic branding, if you like. It's very light touch, but it does combine the two. It's by no means, you know, what we we don't take this recording and use it on the podcast. I totally remix it over there, but it does have that kind of 
ear candy. This is what All Things Audio is all about. And it gives us a couple of seconds to breathe once we've opened up the space. So I do enjoy that. Yeah. And and obviously, one of the reasons I I couldn't um, get Paul's clip to play is because I really haven't played with the roadcaster to its full potential um, in a space live. So actually, it was a really good thing for me to do. I know it was probably annoying for people and frustrating while I fiddled about with the fader and then changed from Soundflower or whatever I've been doing earlier <laughs> onto the Roadcaster. But that was a really good lesson for me. And I feel like that's what this space has always been about. It's been about us learning and us learning together. And uh, those kind of elements really can lift the quality of a space. I totally agree with you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Jason, did you have something to add? Our space, we do, we have custom sound effects and opening and I've got all these little sound effects loaded on the Roadcaster, and um, it definitely adds to our show, which is our pet chat on Saturday. That's all I wanted to mention. I, it, it depends on the show, and it does add to the, the fun. Yeah, that is so cool. I love that. And, you know, George used to play his um, sounds in for us, didn't he? Very appropriate. You know, we used to have our um, fanfares and applause and all of those kinds of things. And I've got different things loaded up on the pads, but I don't know. I guess, as I say, I'm I'm not overly confident in using the Rodecaster. I've not done it enough times. So I guess if the All Things Audio community is up for me learning, like I've learned everything else as we go along, then maybe we'll do a bit more of that as as it happens um, in the in the live environment. <laughs> on the PyTrack P4, it does have uh, four pads where it has some sounds pre-programmed in, like applause. Um, symbols of a drum, a couple of different things, but you can customize it however you want. So there's a lot you could do with that as well, just FYI. And it's worth saying, like, I'm no less nervous going live <laughs> every week. Like last week, I was incredibly nervous for the 100th show. It might have been 100. And, you know, I've been in other people's spaces and I've spoken on Clubhouse and I've been on the radio for a lot of years. But I still, I'm, I'm glad I still have the respect for the mic and you know I get those nerves before I go live like I feel like that is what drives me to do it but you know I'm I'm not overly confident with with the stuff I love it but I don't want to mess up so yeah it, it'll be good for me to to work that out and someone who can help me do that is Michael Sterling who um requested the mic next so hi Michael how are you hello hey, Michael. Man, I came up here to talk about Clubhouse, but this is a much more interesting conversation for me because I've done the same thing as you all and as uh, Jason's done. I've I've used a roadcaster to do professional stuff on Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces at the same time um, and learned from that and how to like repurpose that into a podcast and stuff. And I definitely think um, when you're intentional about what you're doing, you can convert, like just like you all are, um, the both of you, you, you can convert a uh, space or clubhouse room or whatever to a podcast uh, really, really well. But I um, it, it takes some intention. It takes a good framework to know that like, you know, this is going to be how the, the program runs so that you can clip this out and do this in the podcast and whatever. And Suze, one more thing, like to your point of like not being confident with using the roadcaster and hitting the sound pads and so on, you can, there's always rehearsal. Like you don't have to necessarily do it the first time when you're live in a Twitter space, you can take time on an evening sometime. You don't have anything else to do. All right. And like, think through the steps you're going to need to do. I need to do this. I need to push this button and so on, write it down if you have to, and then just practice it over and over again. And that muscle memory and everything will start to be built in. You'll be a lot more confident when the live program actually comes. That's all I got to say. Back to you all. Thanks. And uh, Andrew's next, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because minds are being blown at the moment. Did you see what he just put in the nest? He has a big announcement. I have to say, my mind is blown. Andrew, how are you? You're listening to Andrew Lyons, the founder of Spaces Dashboard, exclusively on Twitter Spaces. Oh, that's Ooh, too good. Nice. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I had to do that. Obviously, Greg was Greg was saying that. And I totally agree with what Michael just said. I just go onto Spaces so much with my soundboard, just practicing stuff. Because again, I've, I'm working on some format shows and sound's going to be such a key part of that. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. As Madeline mentioned, I posted something in the nest. I've been talking about it for, you know, teasing it in the last couple of weeks. I am 
so happy that we're announcing it on your show as well because just to show the support i haven't even posted any tweets about it yet i wanted to just come in and drop the alpha here with you guys now when you go onto spaces dashboard and you will have to log in that's the only thing you will have to log in to get these features but now you have the ability to do two things not just one two things you can set up Spaces dashboard alerts for anyone and you will be notified if they schedule or if they're co-hosting or if they take a speaker slot on a space. Like I just showed up in the tweet in the nest. Obviously, I'm monitoring myself. I took the speaker slot in your space and I got an email letting me know because then what I could do is click and I'm in and I'm listening to that person that I find of interest. You will never have to worry about missing a conversation again on Twitter Spaces. You don't even have to have the tw walking the dog. You can be doing whatever you're doing, getting on with life. But if there's somebody that you're interested in, and if they take a slot, if they get onto the mic, you can come in and listen. You can search for any user. If you know their name, you click track. We're going to run this now for 30 days basically to get everybody's feedback gotcha. Be because Excellent we want to make, yeah, we want to make sure you guys show us what we're doing, what we haven't thought of, any ideas around it, um, little flaws like this, et cetera. That's why I haven't posted it out. This is pure alpha. This is, this is pure hot off. So the other thing you can do is while you're, while you're surfing around, if you see anyone of interest, you can either add them to your alert or the other big news is that we want everybody to be able to create their own dashboards. So you can build up a list, a collection of people in a certain category that you're interested in. And then you don't have to look at our live leaderboard. You can go and look at your own collection. And we'll track the spaces they've been to. The You'll be able to see what the most popular space is in because you have the option to share your collection with the world or you can keep it private. Now, as I said, this has just gone live on the dashboard. I haven't even tweeted about it. I'm literally just dropping it here. Oh, thank you. That's brilliant. I mean, we've been waiting for this. These, these collections are a bit like Twitter lists, right? But we can actually like group together people who are running spaces on different topics and all that kind of thing. And again, the other big thing is you'll be able to insert an existing Twitter list to create a collection. Oh, very fancy. Madeline. <laughs> there's your weekend gone <laughs> wow i like that and we yeah, are going to well, be running are... lots of spaces around this because i want all the feedback okay. this is literally going to be like the old days of twitter spaces when they jumped on and we've got everybody in and we say what are you doing how are you finding it and i think we haven't thought of i want to go back to those old days and i think now that we've got these two features essentially out in the wild and i've been using them internally for over a, you know two months i can't imagine looking at spaces without them. They really are changed the way I said to suddenly I'm, I'm not just getting the same echo chambers. I'm what I'm most excited about is to see what everybody else creates and I can go and look at what their area, of course. Now, how do you get notifications? At the moment you're getting an email. So you have to, again, make sure we've got your email address. But moving forward, again, that's where the feedback comes in because people may say, look, we want it to come through to our Slack or can you throw it into our Discord group or can you put it into all... All that feedback's going to come back. We will then build on top of it. The foundations were in place. We are very confident it works fine. And it really... We hear these two words said quite a lot. It is a game changer. For me... As somebody who loves Twitter spaces, this was the missing piece to the puzzle. It's definitely a game changer, 100%. The key thing about this is we want to try and monetize this element of it. We're going to have a free bit and we have a number of tiers, but we don't want to come up with a pricing. We want to work with the community to say, you know, what do we think is fair in here? How much would an enterprise pay? How much do you guys think would be interesting to get your, you know, if somebody mentions you, here's the other thing. Somebody mentions your tweet in a space, we can also alert you. Yeah, I see that. And that is amazing. And your website, you can also put your domain in there and say, look, if anybody shares a link to my domain, let me know. Amazing. This is exciting, Andrew. Yeah, I, I again, 
please bear with us because we're going to have 30 days of pure having spaces pretty much every day. Jump in, give us the feedback, tell us what you found, what you don't like, what you like. It's going to be like the old days, the old days of Twitter spaces. Yeah, where discoverability was so much better. This is amazing news. I'm so glad you shared this with us, Andrew. I'm so excited that you have this feature. I'm definitely going to try it out. Please, anyone, send me DMs, screenshots, everything you can, and come to our spaces, which are pretty much going to be daily over the next 30 days to get the feedback for everyone. And that list you you presented, Suze, the 100, brilliant. That must have taken you forever. No, well, this is the thing. It really didn't because it had sort of been in the background on my phone for ages, just like adding something every time I thought of <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> and then it just kind of turned into a thing. Um, and I still don't think it's its final thing either. But thank you. That that means a lot that it, you felt that it was um, worthwhile doing at, at least. And all of this sounds amazing. It sounds totally like you might have been listening to those of us who've been using Spaces for a few years and you've thought about what we've said and what we might need and want <laughs> from, you know, spaces and from a, a third party app. And you're totally doing it. I, I love it. And thank you so much for, for sharing the news right here um, before you've even tweeted it out yourself. It means a lot to us, Andrew. Thanks. No worries. Thanks, ladies. Yeah, this is amazing news. I'm going to have so much fun with this. Suze, I, it's so exciting when we get like these breaking news that get shared here with us. We really appreciate people that come here and do this with us. Uh, Jason from Bunsen and Beaker, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Because, uh, you know, you've been hanging out with us for a bit. Appreciate you joining us. Was there anything else you wanted to share? One of the things that I did that's really fun and it's a suggestion for people, I'm not telling you guys how to run anything, but it's just what, what I did, is on the Roadcaster, I, like I found my own little riffs and sound effects from running the show. I know people talk about, oh, they're going on a date tonight or they're talking about their dog saw another dog that they're just in love with. And then I have like the, um, you know, like the sexy saxophone music. So I play like a little clip of that. So sometimes it adds quite a bit of humor, but you've got to be really fast um, and know where all those, those buttons are. Um, yeah. Or if somebody's trying to catch their dog, like my dog got out, I have a little riff from the Pokemon theme gotta catch a mo you know like anyways anyway I, I, it's really fun but you do have to be quick because if you're like two seconds too slow it's like one of those rim shots you know that is you know, way too slow <laughs> cool thank you for sharing this is it i definitely want to get quick at it though and one of the things i love is making cute little production e type things that sort of one of the things I do geekily in my spare time. So um, I don't know, maybe maybe we need some all things audio production for, for various things. I'll have to uh, have a think about it. And our last speaker, Tristan. Hey, hey there. I, I feel like <laughs> I'm throwing back to a comment about 10 minutes ago. So um, maybe maybe my thing's passed. I, I was just going to have a comment about um, yeah, which audio and which, uh, which sound effects you're going to have. Um, that, yeah, I think they're, they're good for segmentation and things. Uh, and I, I miss, I have to say, I, I have enjoyed the, the Clubhouse um, little bits of sounds, though people haven't really been using the sounds as much. They do get a bit annoying and you sort of need a few too many button presses to use them, the little sound effect soundboard that's on there now. Uh, but the GIFs, I, I miss GIFs over here uh, and a few of the icons um, for a few of the emojis. Um, we, we can't do a fire heart and things uh, over here at the minute. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> but um, no, I was, the only thing I was going to say is I think you do need to experiment with those sounds and things a little bit um, or, and use them very conservatively. Uh, I, I'm in a daily room and I have to say, I really don't like the intro music. I have to turn the volume off. This, it annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's irrational. It's irrational that it does, but I don't like their intro music. So I turn it off for the first 30 seconds of the room and then fade it back up again. <laughs> so um, I think you do have to test that out with your audience and use it conservatively. So, um, But I do think uh, that the, the, the chapter way that you can do stuff, then it is so much better. I'm just always disappointed that you have to have a roadcaster or something. It, it can't just be an in-app sort of type experience, which would, um, which would be better for all of us. But hey, Back to you and uh, enjoy your. I'm looking forward to the 101 emoji so that I can. Or now it's need to be 102. I need to increment them each week. Please put in the change request. Yeah, that's what we should do. Really, we we need that because that was a lot of fun at the end of last week's. That space, was wasn't it? that was Absolutely. so cool. Thank you all for doing that. Was just what a great idea from Hosteline to get everybody doing those 100 emojis. It was brilliant. 
But I just want to wind back to what Tristan was saying there because, you know, I think I was very aware that the sound effects could get very annoying very quickly. And so because of that, I've really stepped back from using any of them at all. But I do see where it could, you know, I am someone who, when I'm doing sound, when I'm doing sound design, I'm creating sound design for people. The whole point of it is that if it doesn't enhance what you're doing, then don't use it. So it's about being able to be quick on your feet with whether or not this is enhancing this moment by using this effect and having the right effects, having a palette that is wide enough that it doesn't get annoying. So that's that's really interesting. Also, our bed for All Things Audio was was really, it was one that I just created and had randomly like in my back pocket and we just started using it for the podcast and was never meant to be particularly listened to. And so in that respect, it, it kind of works okay. It's about 40 seconds long. And if you're here right from the very start of the space, you probably hear about 30 seconds of it. Personally, I can't listen to it for any longer than that. It's not meant for that. Um, so potentially it's about having a suite of those beds because that is, it's just a loop. It's just the same thing over and over again. And it was just meant as like the beginning of a podcast and then fade out and hear an intro and off you go. So, um, you know, I think Paul, who does the um, mouthwash spaces, you know, we've got a piece of music there that we put together that moves. It does something over like two and a half minutes and we know it's two and a half minutes long and that's how long we've got once the space is live before we actually you know hit the button and and start the conversation sort of thing but there's enough there to listen to so yeah if you're using spaces uh sorry if you're using sounds and music and things like that it is about having that variety and making sure that it is actually listenable too as i said you know there's a lot of things i know you could do differently and you should do differently that perhaps we're not doing completely right here but it's all about learning jason i see your hand you've got more to say about using sound yeah, what comes to mind, another suggestion that has been a hoot is when we have our science guests on, um, we I try to find music from their speciality. So we interviewed this uh, anthropologist, Dr. Emily Zakra, Zakara, sorry, and she's a monster expert. So she studies the history of where monsters come from, from an anthropological you know viewpoint. So when people were waiting... I played Monster Mash um, and she got such a kick out of that because it was tailored to her expertise. When we've had NASA scientists on, especially like the last one where she actually is on the rover team, the Curiosity rover team, I had softly playing in the background um, The Martian, you know, with Matt Damon, he's stuck on Mars and uh, they get it and they, they just tickles them. They think it's so cool that it's, uh, that it, it's tailored to them. Um, anyways. Very smart use of it. No, that's a really nice touch. That's very good. Love it. Thank you to all of our speakers who came on and uh, shared so much great stuff. And we're available in all of your favorite podcast apps. We're out there, uh, All Things Audio. You can also go to allthingsaudiopodcast.com as well. You certainly can. And you can catch us here on Twitter and use the hashtag allthingsaudio. And we'll pick that up throughout the week. So that's it for this week. But thank you so much to everyone that's been here in the space with us and those of you listening. And we'll catch up with you next week. Bye, everybody. 